lessons. These are the best lessons that the Lord has ever given me. And I know you've heard me say that over and over many times. But this is the last, last days. And we have very little time to serve the Lord. So I want to make sure that you will know where to find these lessons so that you yourself can serve the Lord. I have got a message that is a best, best message for anyone that is serving the Lord. And if you're not, then you must use my website, gloriousmessage.com, and you must copy all of these videos and tell someone else this good news. Because the only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. This is what the world needs is Christ. That is eternal. So we have been talking about eternal salvation, eternal redemption, eternal inheritance, eternal spirit. This is what the world needs. Only those things that are eternal are important. So I'm wanting you to write down a Bible verse today, and I want you to learn it. The first one is John 3, 27. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. And then, if you're serving the Lord, you must read John 12, 26. Now, this is something I want in every home that is a child of God. Here is your promise. This is, and every promise is yea, yea, and amen to the glory of God. I have lived all of these. I know they work. Because if you serve the Lord, you, I do it for the glory of God and not for money. Because Christ didn't ask for money. And I'm just thankful to the good Lord that he has given me wisdom beyond my abilities. Because he says, I will give unto thee a mouth of wisdom and all of your adversaries cannot gangsay, nor resist. And then he tells us it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I pray for one hundredfold. That's his will. So let's see what that means to every person that's listening today. Jesus Christ is God's listen at this now. You need to write this down. Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the whole world. John 3, 16. For God so loved you, the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, will never die, but have everlasting life. He died instead of you. This is the greatest news in the world today. And then, this is another Bible verse that you need. The believers are the Father's love gift to Christ Jesus. That's believers. That's those that have been born again by the Spirit of God. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about eternal spirit. So I'm not going into that right now. But I want you to understand that believers are the Father's love gift to Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is his earthly name and Christ is his heavenly name. That means he's my Lord. That means he's my master. He's the head of the body of believers. We can claim this every second. This is absolute sovereignty over us as our Lord. That means I am to obey him in all things. And then this is another great truth concerning Christ. Now, I'm going to read these to you later this week or next week. It is Christ 
who commits the believers to the Father for safekeeping so that the believers' security rests upon the Father's faithfulness to his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, both of these, you have to read John 17 for each of these. But this is something that you are going to learn through these lessons. And I'll, I will just wait, wait for you to read John 17 and see if you can find these answers. And then when you serve the Lord, this is the greatest promise. I want you to understand what the joy of serving the Lord is. And listen at this, John 12, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, listen at this promise. If any man serve me, this is for every person that is serving the Lord, him will my Father honor. You see, that's why I live the abundant life. All you have to do is to appropriate these by faith, and they are yours after you are a child of God. But before you are a child of God, you cannot receive these promises because you have to be born again. And we're going to learn that. This is eternal spirit today in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 and 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, and God loves us all the same. There's no respecter of persons, and we are to love each other with his divine love. Let's pray. Oh, a gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee and praise thee for these truths today. May every person that's going through trials come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And we can come into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith that whatsoever we ask, His word can not fail. Every word is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. So I can appropriate each one of these promises today that I've already given to thee, and I pray that each one of these precious saints that thou hast brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee, will serve thee with the joy that thou hast given to me. And I pray that each one will give this message out to another person. And we will work together to see this universe turn to the Lord. Christ is the answer. And he shed his blood. He loved us and has washed us from our sins in his own blood. And we're going to learn more about this in the next few weeks. And we're thanking him today and praising him for victory. Thanks be unto God, which always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against these truths. And I have prayed for 100 fold, and I know this is his will. So if you're listening today, just call upon him to save you, and he will. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we come to Hebrews 9.14. This is his eternal spirit. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, offered himself without spot to God. John 4, 23 and 24. And if you don't know the book of John, I want you to read. If as a child of God, when you first become a child of God, you are to read the book of John. It teaches us his deity. And this is why you must know this, because you cannot worship him apart from the Spirit of God. 
So in John chapter 4, this is when he came to the well with this person, a Samaritan, and he taught her about Christ, his own self. He said to her, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. She even knew he was coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And in verse 26, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And he's speaking to you today, right now. Every person, because this is his living word. He's a living word. And not one word can fail. So this is what he's, you are right now receiving a divine message. This is a heavenly divine message. And everything in this book is going to happen exactly the way it was written all these years ago. So he said to the woman, he said, But the hour cometh and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, this is what's wrong with the world today. They have no wisdom of this book. He's our wisdom. And we must get back to this book because there's nothing else. This is the only thing in life that is eternal. The only thing in life that is eternal. So then we see and these, these are messages that every person must learn. Because if you don't know these, then you are going to be deceived by the wisdom of the world. And the world has nothing to offer. He says, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. This is your victory. Do you want to be defeated? If you don't know Christ, you are already defeated. If you want to know life, eternal life, you will never die. And you will know the joy and the peace and the love that goes with the Spirit of God. That's us. So then we're going to turn to Ephesians now. I'm going to give a lot of Bible verses because I want you to write them down and I want you to teach these to those people that you love and even those that don't love you. This is a, I mean, I love everybody. I love you, those of you that's watching this show, t this uh, program today. I love you. So he says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, Christ exalted to be the head of the body, the church, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And then we see in Ephesians chapter 4, all of these are for every true believer. Because you can't understand this book until you become a child of God. Because the Spirit of God is our teacher. So here he says in John 4, 4 through 6, there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of his calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, you're baptized after you're born again, to show the world that you, he was baptized and he didn't have any sin, so baptism cannot wash your sins away, only the blood of Christ. So here we see one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And you see, if baptism, what baptism does, it shows us when he died, he rose again, he died instead of us, so we're baptized by the Holy Spirit, and we're going to be raised as he was raised because after three days he arose from the dead. You have to believe in the resurrection. You have to believe in the Trinity. You have to believe in the virgin birth. 
You have to believe this word. If you doubt, you won't receive any good thing from the Lord. So that's what we're teaching you in these lessons. And then we turn to 2 Corinthians. This is another Bible verse that you need because I'm giving you the Bible verses because, you know, that's the only thing that's going to pierce your heart because his word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So here is 2 Corinthians 1. Now, I, you know, when you think about this book, how many times have you read this book through? First, 2 Corinthians 1. Now, I'm going to read verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Now, he which established us with you in Christ hath hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. This is what we have in Christ. This is why you must know the Word of God, and you cannot ever obey the Word apart from this book. You can't. It's impossible. Because you have to know what he has given us to live by. That's the only way. When you get up in the morning, the first thing you want is food for your body. As a child of God, you should desire this the same as you do your food. And read the book of John through until you can understand about Christ and his love for us. And then we see in Ephesians well, let me see. I've got two or three scriptures here in Ephesians. So I'm going to go to Ephesians 1, verse 13 and 14. I've got so many verses, and I don't want to confuse you. Okay, he says, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. See, the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. In whom also after you believed, you have to believe the word of God, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. That's what we're coming to today or next week. Our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise, unto the praise of his glory. Everything he does, and while I'm here, I'm going to give you this Bible verse, and I'll give it to you again, but that's all right. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints of God. We have inherited everything that Christ has, and he's the head of all creation. And we're heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And then, if you serve him, what did I tell you before? If we serve him, you must understand this. Him will my Father honor. Write this down, John 12, 26. It's the greatest joy in the world. There's nothing else like this. There's no joy apart from Christ because he's our joy. So this is why we serve the Lord. And this is another inheritance in Ephesians 1, 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. What glory this is. And then in 1 Peter, 1 Peter, this is another great lesson. We've had these on him before, but we are giving them out again. Because you know, the more you repeat, the more you learn. So we're going to give this. 1 Peter 1, verse 21 who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Now, this is for every person that is a child of God. I want you to listen to these Bible verses and memorize them. Verse 22 of 1 Peter. 
chapter 1. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. You see, the Spirit of God can't work. Once again, I will say it again, apart from the book. Unto unfeigned love, pure love of the brethren. We're to love one another. Unto unfeigned love. That's pure love. That's God's love. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. What is your heart? Your intellect, your emotions, and your will. That's your whole being. That's how we're to love each other. Why am I here giving this out to you? Because God loves you and I love you. I don't want anything from you. God don't want anything from us. We do it willingly. And then, his him will my Father honor. Brings tears to my eyes to think he loves me this much. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You can't be saved apart from this book. We just read it in Ephesians 1. And then, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. And then, in verse 25 of 1, chapter 1 in Peter, verse 25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. This is a living book. It is eternal. Jesus Christ is from eternity to eternity. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's why I want each of you with MyGloriousMessage.com follow all of those lessons and give them out to another person. And we will obey what he says. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, now this is a great promise. I use this all the time. And the God of all peace sanctify us wholly. And I pray that your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something that you must know while we're talking about this spirit and the Trinity. The Trinity. The Spirit receives impressions of the outward and material things through the soul and the body. The sense faculties of the Spirit are divine spiritual faculties. Now remember, this is a heavenly book, a heavenly calling, a heavenly birth. This is from heaven. The world cannot give us this. They are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Think of this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So I can see that in these lessons. And then we come back now to the time when we as believers get in this book in 1 Corinthians. And this, you, you must understand 1 Corinthians to understand what the Spirit does. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and this is a deep, deep chapter. These are the Christians are reminded that the Christian revelation owes nothing to human wisdom. We don't need human wisdom. He says in verse 2 of chapter 2, I mean chapter 10, verse 10 of chapter 2, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. And then in verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but by the Spirit of God. And then in verse 13, which things also we speak, 
not in words of man's wisdom, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This book, when you study, study it, all you have to do is to go from chapter to chapter, and he gives you everything that is needed. Everything. And then in verse 14, God reveals them by his spirit. You must understand this. The revealed things of are taught in words given by the Spirit. Verse 14, But the natural man, the man that's not born again, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And now you must understand that next week, we're going to teach uh, more about the Spirit. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. You see, the Trinity is God the Father, and we're going to see that we need to know the whole Trinity, the fullness of God, and the Father, the fullness of Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. This is the final name of the one true God, John 17, 3. This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. One true God, that's the only one. So that God is one. The three affirms equality and oneness of substance. That's what it is. They can't be separated. So we're listening now when he says, when you serve me, Christ, because when you give out this book, it's all about Christ. Him will my Father honor. You bring